This quick demo will walk you through how to use sub-resource integrity. Sub-resource integrity is used when we're going to make a request and pull in resources from an external party into our site. This is common when we're doing things like jQuery and these other third-party kind of add-ins that we bring in. And so I have a simple page here, demo.html, and you can see in here that I have a script resource going out and pulling in a JavaScript file. Now this JavaScript file doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, we can actually go take a look at it over here. And we can see that all it does is alerts demo script loaded. So I just want to show that we actually pulled in the demo script that we have and then it is working. So if we go up here where I already have it loaded and we refresh the page, we can see that we get the alert box that says demo script loaded. This is great. We're pulling in the resource as we expect, but what happens when that resource gets modified and we weren't aware of it? Say somebody puts some malicious code in there and all of a sudden we're pulling that into our application and it's going to execute that code. We'd have no way of doing that. So if we were to modify the script over here, we would run into problems because it would just run in the context of our application. And that can be dangerous for our users and our organization. So we want to be able to try to stop that. And that's what sub-resource integrity is trying to do, is basically what it does is it forces a hash on the file that you're expecting. So if that file has changed since you got your hash, then it won't load the file. So let's see a couple ways of how we can actually create the hash that's going in there. Now I'm using, this is local on here, I'm actually using uh, the Linux subsystem on my Windows machine. And so I'm using bash here to be able to run open SSL commands. And I'm already in the directory. Uh, I've gone out and copied that JavaScript file that we see that we're referencing right here, demo script.js. I've copied that local. Now that I have it local, I can go ahead and run some commands to actually create the hash of that file. So here we're going to do, we're going to use open, open SSL and we're going to do a SHA 384 digest of it, right? The hash. We're going to do it as binary. And then we specify the files that we have. So demo script one.js. And then we're going to take that hash and we're going to pipe it into OpenSSL again. This time we're going to base64 that value. So that way we can actually use it since it came down binary hash. And then when we hit enter, we'll see that we get this hash value up here. Okay, so this is the hash value that we're going to use in our script tag. So let me show you what that would actually look like. I'm gonna go ahead and already got this played out, but you can see we add an integrity attribute. I put what type of hash I did, the SHA-384, and then we paste in that hash value, and then we add in a cross origin equals anonymous. Um, because when we're dealing with sub-resource integrity, we're gonna look at cores. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we set this to anonymous. So let's just grab this and we'll paste it back in our demo and we'll just replace the current script tag that we have with the new one. Now if we run this, we shouldn't notice any difference unless that file's changed, but it hasn't. So if we come over here and we'll run it again, we can see demo script loaded. Everything is fine. It works as expected. But what happens when we come over here and let me get out of that file and we'll update it. All right, so this time, let's go ahead and say, instead of alert demo, let's do demo one. This is just a simple change, but it will help identify that when we make this modification, the resource will no longer load. So we'll go ahead and change this. We'll save that file. So now we're demo one instead of demo. So now let's reload this page and see what happens. Notice how I didn't get the alert this time. Instead, I got this message over here 
that says failed to find a valid digest. So the file has changed and it has failed our integrity check. And this is what's going to help protect us in the event that that third party resource that we're linking out to may be vulnerable. And it's just as simple as putting this on here with that hash. Now, there's another way to be able to generate these hashes. So a cool thing we can do is we can actually generate this on the web. We can go to uh, srihash.org. And with this, we can actually take our URL. So we have our URL already embedded because we're using it. We copy that URL. We paste it into the generator and we just hit hash. And this actually generates that script for us. Now, notice that the hash SHA-384-IXD, whereas we had ZMS over here, the reason for that is, is because this grabbed the hash of the latest file, which is the one that said demo one instead of demo. But basically all you have to do is grab this, we copy it out, we can go paste it in, we'll replace our current script tag, we'll save our file, we'll go back to the demo page, and this time when we reload, we see demo one script loaded, right? Because we've generated the hash off the updated file to be able to load that in. So that's a quick walkthrough of how you can use SRI to help protect the integrity of the files you're expecting when they come in. And if they're not found valid, it just won't load that code into your application and it won't run it.